Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Today we're going to be looking at Dart2 Native, and we're going to be building a command line app, which we will then be able to convert into a native executable using the Dart2 Native command. Now, Dart2 Native was released in Dart 2.6, so you'll need Dart 2.6 if you want to use Dart2 Native. Though our application will also work in lower versions of Dart, you just won't be able to compile it into an executable. Dart2 Native has some limitations, and you can see them down here. Currently, there's no cross-compilation support, there's no signing support, and there's no support for Dart Mirrors and Dart Developer. So keep these in mind if you plan to build some kind of native executable with Dart. I imagine in the future they will fix a lot of these. So the application that we're going to build today will be a command line application that will make use of this API called metaweather.com. This API allows us to search out a city and then search out the temperature of the city. So we'll be able to query our command line interface and pass in a city name and then get back the weather for either today or for an entire week. The way the API works, Say we put in London, we get back a ID for the city itself, and then we can use this ID to query the temperature for London. If I go ahead and put that ID into the API here, we now have this consolidated weather key, which has a list of a bunch of weather properties for London. All right, so let's go ahead and generate our application. So for this, I'm gonna be using Stagehand, and of course, because our application is going to be a command line app, we can use the console full template. So I've created a folder here called weather, and when I call this command, what it'll do is it will generate a project called weather as well. Here's our generated application, and I'm going to go ahead into the PubSpec YAML, bump Dart up to 2.6, and also add some dependencies, the path dependency and the HTTP dependency. All right, so most of the work that we're going to do is going to take place in this lib folder. We have the bin folder, which has our main function. So this is the entry point for our command line. So first, let's create a data model for our API. And our weather model will be pretty simple. We'll have three doubles, one for the temperature, another one for the min temperature, and another one for the max temperature. And then we'll have a string for the date. If we go back to the JSON for our API, you can see here that we've got keys like the applicable date. This will be our date key. Then we've got min temp, max temp, and the temp. And these are our doubles. If we wanted to, we could bring in things like wind speed, wind direction, air pressure, humidity, etc. But let's just keep it to the temperatures and the date. Now, of course, because we're going to be deserializing the JSON into these weather objects, let's create a from JSON named constructor. So this takes in a map, which will be our JSON, and then we can use the different keys from the JSON and assign them to the different values inside of our weather class. So temp will be the temp, min temp will be min temp, max temp will be max temp, and then date will be applicable date. Now also, because we're going to be printing these objects out to our command line, we want to override the toString method. So basically, all we're really doing here is just saying date, and then we're going to put the date in, then we'll have temperature, and we'll put in the temperature, and we'll make sure that it only has two decimal points, so we can use two string as fixed and pass in two. And then we can do the same for min temp and for max temp. And at the end of this statement, we want to have a new line because we will be having multiple weather objects being printed out at once, and we don't want them to run together. Because we get all of our temperature as Celsius, we should put a C after each of our temperature items. If we wanted to, of course, we could add a method that would allow us to convert the Celsius to Fahrenheit as well, and then we could put in Fs instead of Cs. For the sake of simplicity, we'll just keep them as Celsius. All right, so now let's move along and create our weather API. So we need to import Dart Convert. We're going to need to bring in our package HTTP and we'll alias it as HTTP and we'll also need to bring in our model. Now at the top of our weather API, we want to create two static constants and both of these will be URLs which we're going to use to ping to our API. Remember, when we put in a city name, we have to search out the ID. We need to have the URL that we use to search out the ID first, and then we also need the URL that we use to search out the actual temperature for that ID. Notice that I put these placeholders here. That way, when we go to query these URLs, we can replace them with the items that we want to search for. All right, so let's start by getting the city ID. 
So for this, we're going to pass in our string, which will be the city name, and then we'll return a future of int. We'll return the ID, which will be an integer. And of course, because we're calling to the API, it needs to be asynchronous. First, we need to modify our URL. We can just say ID URL, replace the placeholder with the city, and then that will give us our URL. And then we can call http.get on that URL. We need to await on this to get back our response. Then we want to decode this into JSON. And if we get back an empty list, we can throw back an exception. Otherwise, we want to take the JSON take the first item in the list and find the key woe ID, which will be the ID of the first city. Now let's go ahead and create our get weather method. So this again will take in our city string and then it will pass back a future list of weather objects. First, we'll take the city and we'll call get city ID with the city inside of it. And of course we want to await on it because it's asynchronous. This will give us back our ID, which we can then embed in our API URL. And we do the same thing that we did up here where we're just replacing the placeholder with the ID, except in this case, we're converting the ID into a string. Then of course, we want to make our request to the API. So we want to call http.get on our URL, and then this will give us back our response. We want to decode the response body into a map. Along with that, we'll create an empty list of weather objects so that we can add each of the objects into this list and then return it. The list that has all of our temperatures and stuff inside of it has a key above it called consolidated weather. So we want to get that key from our JSON map. Then because this is going to give us back a list, we can cast this as a list and then we can use the for each method to go ahead and take each of our maps and convert them into weather using weather from JSON. And then we can put them inside of our weather list. We can return the weather list. All right, so now let's fall back into our weather.dart file. And what we're gonna do in here is create a function which we'll use as the entry point for our command line. We wanna call this function directly from our main function and we'll pass the arguments that come in through the main function into this function as a list of string. Now for this, we're going to need dart.io and we're also going to need this package called args, which has a library called command runner. And we'll use this command runner to basically set up the various commands that the user can access. So we can go ahead and create a command runner object. And what this essentially does is it allows us to describe the CLI that we're creating. So here we're creating a weather CLI, and then we can add a description that will just say Dart weather CLI. Or we could make it even more descriptive. We could say this command line goes and gets the weather from an API, etc. Now the runner itself allows us to add commands and flags and options to it. In our case, it will be either a now or a week command. Now we'll go and get the weather for today, and then week will go and get the weather for a week. So for these commands to work, we want to go ahead and create some objects which will describe these commands. We'll go ahead and we'll create a new folder in here called commands, and inside of it we'll create a file called command.dart. In here, I'm going to create an abstract class called weather command, which extends a command type, which is the type that we need to pass into the add command method. Now this abstract class is just going to be a template for our other commands. And we can use this abstract class to create properties that we want to give to our other commands. We'll give our other commands a loading message. This will be a message that we send to the command line while the API is being queried. We then just want to query the API itself. So we need to create a weather API object in here. And let's make it static so that we don't create multiple weather API objects. And we also want to create a method called getWeather, which takes in the string and then passes back a future list of weather. Each command has a run method attached to it, and we want to override the default run method so that we can put in our own logic. And this will be the logic that each of our commands will follow when they get called. First, we can check to see if our arg results arguments is empty. So if our arguments list is empty, then that means that the user didn't pass in a city. If the arguments are not empty, then we can go ahead and get the city from the zeroth index of our arguments list. 
We can then take our loading message and inject our city name into it. That way when this function runs, it'll say something along the lines of fetching data for city and then it'll be the name of the city. We want to print all of this out to the command line and then go ahead and call get weather and then print out the weather to the command line. We're just calling standard out right and then we're passing in our loading string followed by a new line and then we're getting our weather by calling get weather and we're actually calling this get weather not the one that's attached to our weather API. We'll use this get weather to call the weather API inside of each of our commands and then of course we want to take all of the objects that we get back from this call and then write all of them into the console and this will automatically call to the two string method so we don't have to call it ourselves. Alrighty, so now let's actually build out the commands themselves. So first let's start with the now command. So now command will extend our weather command. Now each command has a name and a description by default. And then of course, because of our abstract class, we also want to add in a loading message. The name will be the name of the command. This will appear in the help menu and it will also be the name that the user actually calls in the command line. Name now will be our command for this. And then we have a description. This will be printed out if the user calls help on the command. So it'll say prints out weather for right now at a given city. And then we have our loading message, which will say looking for the current weather in. And then remember, we add the city name to the end of this message before we print it back to the console. Finally, we want to go ahead and override our get weather function. And remember, for this command, we only want to get back the first value of our weather call. So we can go ahead and we can call to our weather API by calling weather command dot weather API dot get weather, pass in our city. This will give us back a list of weather objects. And we just want to get the first weather object so we can use the zeroth index to grab that. And then we can just return it inside of a list. So we're still returning a list of weather, but in this case, we're returning a list of weather and it's only going to have one element inside of it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set up the week command. So again, we need to add a name. This will be called week. So the user will call the week inside of the command line to execute this command. Then we'll have our description, which just says prints weather for the week in a given city. And then we'll have the loading message, which will just say looking for weekly weather in and then the city name. Then we want to implement our get weather function. And this will just call weather command weather API get weather with the city. And it will just return the raw data, which will just be the six weather objects that get returned from our API call. Now we can go ahead and come back to our weather CLI function and add the commands to our runner. We're just using the cascade operator. We're calling add command. We pass in our object now command and then we call add command and then we pass in our weak command. And this will set it up so that we can call these commands from the command line. Now we need to execute the runner so we can just go return await runner dot run and then we pass in the arguments and we want to catch any errors if we have any. So if we get back an exception, which is this E value, then we'll write that into our standard out pipeline. Otherwise, we'll print out that an error has occurred. Then we can go ahead and set a global variable called exit code and we'll set it to one. This will just tell us that we've caught all of the errors and then we exit the application. If we exit with an exit code of zero, then that means that the application has just executed without any incident. And then there are other various exit codes that you could use if you wanted to send back various pieces of information. Now let's go into our main.dart file and wire up our command line interface. So all we have to do in here is turn our main function into an asynchronous function and then await on weather CLI and pass in the arguments. And now our application should work. So if I come into our command line and I run dart bin main.dart, you can see that we get back this dart weather CLI prompt. So this tells us about the command line interface and it gives us all of the commands. So we have a help command which gets injected automatically. 
Then we have our now command, which we created, and our weak command, which we also created. And you can see that it even tells us that we can run help on a command to get more information about that command. If we want to run one of our commands, say now on London, it will go and look for the current weather in London, and then it will give us back a single piece of information with the current date and the current temperatures. We could also go ahead and get, say, the week in Tokyo. So we can just call dart bin main dot dart week Tokyo. And then you can see it says looking for weekly weather in Tokyo. And we get back our six sets of data. Now notice if we call a command without adding a city, we get back the exception that the city argument is required. And if we put in a nonsense city name, you can see that it tells us that it cannot find that city because obviously this city doesn't exist. If for some reason, say the API doesn't work, then we would just get back our generic error message, which will just say an error has occurred. Let's go ahead and use our Dart to Native tool to convert this into an executable. We can run Dart to Native, and then we want to put in the entry point file for our application, which is bin main.dart. Then we want to output an executable for Windows. So we'll just say weather.exe. It gives us back that it generated a binary called weather.exe inside of our weather folder. Now we can just call that executable and it works just like it does if we were running it in the Dart virtual machine. All right, guys, well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you just like this video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. If you guys want to support the channel, feel free to go and take a look at my Patreon. And if you want to catch more videos like this, then click that notification bell. Have a good night.